Last night, I met a couple of indie hackers to get some Chinese noodles. And we we're talking about MRR numbers, how much revenue is everybody making. And then we went for a couple of beers and one person asked, hey, why don't you just start an agency? This post is about my reasons why I think agencies is actually a hard business model, basically having started two of them, one in my 20s and one in my 30s. And they both performed okay, but they all had different problems. And these problems are inherent to the business model. So for example, those are the feast and famine. So there are times where you make a lot of money and times where you don't, don't make any money. The second thing is that you always want to build an own thing but you never build stuff that's really yours and you always have the urge to build a product, but you never have the time to do so. The third problem is that you have to deal with clients and that can be a great thing, but can also be very tedious. And the fourth thing, which is especially true for software projects, is that you need to deal with the usual rate of software project failure, which is at around two thirds. And I'm going to get into this later. So I prepared all these reasons in my head and I thought I would just give them, give them a great answer. But before I could give the group my answer, which I had a high opinion about because I have the agency experience, one guy in the group actually had a really good answer. And that was someone who had never run an agency, but he was close to getting rec recruited into one. And he decided to build his own stuff and leave away some, leave some money on the table and just do his own thing. And he said this, he said, those people want to hire me bef because I can code really well. They want, to, want me to build up a team and they think I can give them a great solution in my quality. But the problem is this, once I start taking this thing on, I'm not coding anymore. Then I have to manage and do HR. And how, how do they think I'm actually good at them? I'm, I myself think I'm not a good manager. So that's why I don't take on that job. And this blew my mind because suddenly I, I just recognized in an instant that my four reasons that I just gave you before are actually just meta reasons, like following reasons out of the first thing, which is it's not the job that you sign up for. So when I started my agency, this was exactly what happened. Clients hire me because I'm a really good programmer, but the client had no idea how I would manage and how, how I would hire. And now my four problems actually resulted from this initial problem of for getting hired for a different job than I would eventually do. So let's get into these four reasons. The feast and famine. Yes, you can say this is inherent for the business model. And that's partially true because your labor costs are so high and project sizes are usually also, also high and you always have to match, you always, always have to load balance. And if there's a mismatch, let's say you don't have a project, but you have the staff cost, then you get into the, uh, into the famine mode. Once you, and you get back into feast mode once there is a lot of projects in your books and you have to work through them. Why is this actually a problem of not having the, of not being in the right job that you got hired for? Well, if you're working on the projects, you're not selling. And this means that usually uh, someone who is coming from let's say, MBA background or from a business background, they would approach this thing as a load balancing problem. It's like, okay, you have these projects here, the staff, and you have these, the sales pipeline, and you have to always match them up. And it always keeps those things in, in check. And then you hire salespeople and so on. If you're a programmer, that's not, natural what you would usually do you would work on these projects and now you're working on the projects and you're trying to deliver quality but then the sales pipeline runs dry and this is a skill problem of course and if the developer starts an agency and does not go over the skill issue they would constantly move into feast and famine mode this is just something that always happens and yes there is a part where this is actually built into the business and i've seen bigger agencies with a lot of sales people still not selling which that's, that can happen, but especially for small agencies, it's very true that the sales activity comes from the founder. And if the founder is focused on the tech, it's not going to be a good sustainable agency. The second thing is you always want to build a product, but you never have time. And this is something that I've seen over and over and over again. I've probably talked to more than 100 agency owners, small dev shops or bigger agencies, and they all wanted to build products. I've heard this, this word of, yeah, a product is sexy so many times. And once you become an agency owner, you never have real focus to build on product. And I know this because I'm in this position. I've tried a couple of things, but while working on client work, I never was able to really make a product. And I know other people, they made own products, but they never sold them because look, imagine you run a s couple of dev teams and one team can easily make you 50,000 profit if it's a bit of a bigger team. So you're running whatever you're doing with a product, you have to, you have to be better than that. 
how long does it take to get to 50,000 euros or dollars per month in profit with a software product? It takes a, a, a normal, enormous time. It takes so long time that you're getting discouraged and you just take on the next job and get the profit from there. So that's the thing with agencies. Yes, it's great. You can get cash flow quite fast, but you will never have the focus for product. And why is this related to the job that you haven't signed up for? Well, you want to create stuff. You want to be creative. You want to build cool things. And this is what you want to do. And you cannot do this as you run an agency. So this, this urge of building something comes from not being fulfilled doing that. And that happens once you're a developer and you start an agency. The third thing I talked about before in my list was dealing with clients. And again, this has good and bad sides. There are great clients and there are more problematic clients. I'm not going to judge that and it's all people. And usually those things can be sorted out. But it also means that if you are a developer and you're building your own agency, you have to learn that skill of working with people. I always thought I'll be, I'll be great at that. And maybe I'm a natural extrovert and I have a bit of easier time going through difficult conversations, but it doesn't mean I have a good system for that. I had to learn this myself and I would still say I'm still not perfect. So all the struggle I had was just not talking in the right way or not having the systems or not sending demos early enough or not checking in on people. All these things need to get learned. So it's again a, still a skill issue and this means they hire you for development, but in the end you're solving people's problems. It's just what happens and it's related to the first thing. You're not starting an agency because you're a great developer. You should start an agency if you want to be a great manager or you think you are, you think you have what it takes. And the last thing is accepting the failure rate of software projects. And yeah, there are different studies about this. And usually the consensus is it's around two thirds of projects that fail and one third getting shipped in time and in budget. And this is pretty much what my agency also did. We had difficult difficulties with our own tech being late and then shipping or the client had problems, problems selling and then the product was, was uh, not shipped or the product was shipped and then the customers didn't like it or the project was shipped but then the business case changed. There are a lot of reasons why software projects fail. And yes, some of them went into on, uh, on our side. It was our fault that we didn't deliver and a couple of times that the clients didn't deliver. And sometimes it's just a combination of things not work out. You have to know this. When you want to start an agency, this is just something that is always there. You can, of course, you can you can have different methods in order to increase the success rate. For example, you'll be very selective with your clients uh, and you'll be very generous with your deadlines and you never overpromise. But usually the world doesn't the world doesn't work like that like that. The world wants speed, they want to ship things, they want to sell things fast. And if you do that, there is a risk involved. And that's where the software failure rate comes from. It's just risk. But the question is, how do we deal with that? So a developer, if a project goes downhill, the developer wants to fix it, want to go in and just refactor and make sure it works. What would the HR person say? The HR person looks at the problem, looks at the, the, the software project, sees the team below, says, okay, in this team, there are like two, two seniors, two juniors. Let's replace the juniors with better people and continue. That's the HR solution. It can work. I'm not judging. I'm just saying the HR has a different view on things. It, they're not so attached to the technology that we built that absolutely needs to work. And the third thing, um, if, you, if, a, if a manager, like someone with an MBA, someone who comes from a background where everything is just a, a thing between deadlines and time boxes and manpower, uh, workforce aggregation to get something done and estimations and so on. That person would just put in another deadline, maybe assign two more people and say, okay, let's, let's continue. So two approaches here actually detach the problem from your own ego. And one, <laughs> the developer has the ego involved. And that's why as a developer, if you, if you're not switching your mindset into the manager perspective, it's just very hard to deal with that if a product works it doesn't work well. If a project goes downhill, a developer has a much more, it has a ha much harder time to bear this because we are in it with our heart. And I've seen this with these indie hackers that, that we had yesterday in the meetup. And all of them say, yeah, they are happy that they built their own products because they can put their, their heart into that. They love coding, they love building, and they don't have these four problems that I'm mentioning here.
if you're building your own software product and or you want to and you don't know where to start, send me an email and maybe you can jump on a call and I can help you.